Okay, so in this video we'll consider a, an explicit example of eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the following problem. Suppose you were given the following 2 by 2 matrix, 7, 10, 1, negative 2, and I ask you to find a to the hundredth power. Well, what you'd have to do if you do this directly would be do a times a times a times a times a a hundred times, and then you would get the hundredth power of a. What we'll do is actually we'll do even better. With the help of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we'll find not only the hundredth power of a, but we'll find a to the n for any positive power n. So, let's get started. What we need first is to find the eigenvalues of the matrix. If you remember, these will be the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And all this is, is the determinant of the matrix lambda i minus a. Because a is a 2 by 2 matrix, we will have a polynomial of degree 2, so it will be just a quadratic. Well, the determinant of the matrix, we can use vertical bars. Lambda i, because a is 2 by 2, i will also be 2 by 2, so lambda i is the matrix lambda 0, 0 lambda, minus the matrix A, which is 7, 10, 1, negative 2. This is simply the determinant of the matrix. Well, lambda minus 7, 0 minus 10, so negative 10, 0 minus 1, negative 1, and lambda minus negative 2, lambda plus 2. And of course for a 2 by 2 matrix, the determinant is simply AD minus BC. So lambda minus 7 times lambda plus 2 minus BC, which is negative 1 times negative 10, positive 10. So minus 10. If you expand, what do we get? Well, lambda squared, positive 2 lambda, minus 7 lambda, minus 5 lambda, negative 14, negative 10, that's negative 24. Now we have a quadratic, since we're looking for the zeros, we're going to try and factor. Always try and factor by inspection, and not with the quadratic formula. The product of the two terms should be negative 24. The sum should be negative 5. Well, this is negative 8 and positive 3. So negative 8, positive 3. If you multiply out lambda squared, plus 3 lambda minus 8 lambda is minus 5 lambda plus negative 8 times 3, negative 24. And we want the zeros of this polynomial. Well, so we'll have now our two eigenvalues. The first one, if you multiply two terms and the result is 0, one of the terms must be 0. So if this term is 0, lambda equals 8. So we'll call this lambda 1, our first eigenvalue. And of course, if lambda is negative 3, this term is 0, and so lambda 2 equals negative 3 is our second eigenvalue. And now we have the two eigenvalues. What we need is for each one, find a corresponding eigenvector. If you remember, to find the eigenvector, we simply have to solve the linear system. Now here, because a is a 2 by 2 matrix, the eigenvectors are vectors of length 2, so say the components are x and y, and the coefficient matrix is given, if you remember, by the matrix lambda i minus a. And the constant terms are always 0. The system is always homogeneous. Since we have a 2 by 2 matrix, there's just two zeros. So all we have to do is solve for this system when lambda is 8. Solve for the system then when lambda is negative 2. 
and we'll find for each eigenvalue a corresponding eigenvector. Let's find the eigenvector that corresponds to 8 first. So we'll call this v1. So lambda 1 is equal to 8. Well, don't compute lambda i minus a from scratch. If you remember, it is this matrix, right? This is lambda i minus a, determinant of lambda i minus a, determinant of lambda i minus a. So just recopy it. But keeping in mind that we are replacing lambda by the value 8. So 8 minus 7 is 1, negative 10, negative 1, 8 plus 2, positive 10. The system is homogeneous, and we're trying to solve for the system, x and y. And now here, the systems that you'll get in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix will always be so simple that I will not ask you to write the row reductions, the row operations. So, well, here we would simply do row 2 plus row 1, and the row would become a row of zeros. So we're going to have the system 1, negative 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, and now we're done the reduction. X is leading, Y is free, so we can now write the general solution set. As always, we handle the free variables first, so Y can be anything, so let's say Y equals T, and X is going to be 10 T, where T is an arbitrary real numbers. So if you notice, there are actually an infinite number of solutions to the linear system, lambda i minus a, where the eigenvalue lambda is positive 8. And this will always be the case. For any given eigenvalue, there will always exist an infinite number of eigenvectors. The idea is we're going to use one of them to do computation. So the idea is choose the parameter value that will give you the simplest non-zero vector. Here, clearly, the simplest choice of t is going to be t equals 1. So, with this choice, we get the first eigenvector. When t is 1, we get 10, 1. And this is v1. Let's repeat, but now with the eigenvalue, negative 3. This is lambda 2. We're trying to solve the linear system that is homogeneous in the two variables x, y. And again, the matrix is lambda i minus a, but now we replace lambda by negative 3. So we'll get negative 3, negative 7, that's negative 10. Negative 10, negative 1. Negative 3 plus 2, negative 1. And now again, we'll, we'll reduce it very quickly. Think of it this way, negate row 1, negate row 2, you're going to have 10, 10, 1, 1. Do row 1 minus 10 row 2, you'll have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Swap the two rows, and you'll be left simply with 1, 1, and zeros everywhere else. Once again, the matrix is fully reduced, so we can write the general solution set. Y is a free variable. So it's a parameter, and x is simply negative of y, so negative t. And once again, we have an infinite number of eigenvectors. Since we only need one, we choose again the simplest value of t that will yield the simplest non-zero eigenvector. And here you can take either t to be 1 and have the vector negative 1, 1, or you could choose t to be negative 1 and have the eigenvector 1, negative 1. Here, and this choice is completely arbitrary. It doesn't matter. So here I'll choose t to be negative 1. So I will have as a second eigenvector the vector 1, negative 1. And now we're good to go. If you remember the previous video, we have to construct the matrix D, the matrix P, and the matrix P inverse. So the matrix D is a diagonal matrix that consists of the two eigenvalues. So lambda 1, lambda 2, so 8, negative 3, zeros everywhere else. That is the matrix D. 
the matrix P, and here's where you have to be consistent. We used 8 as the first eigenvalue, so the first column of P is the first eigenvector that corresponds to the first eigenvalue, 10, 1. Then it was the second eigenvalue, negative 3, so the second column of P is the second eigenvector, 1, negative 1. And now we need P inverse. Since what we have here is a 2 by 2 matrix, we can use the shortcut formula. So 1 over AD minus BC, well, negative 10, negative 1 is negative 11, so negative 1 over 11. We swap the two entries here, negative 1, positive 10, and we negate these two, negative 1, negative 1. And now here, if you notice, we have three negatives in the matrix, so we're much better off distributing the negative sign here inside and have 1 over 11, 1, 1, 1, negative 10 for P inverse. Only 1, negative 1 instead of 4 negatives. Now if you remember, the idea was to rewrite A, the matrix A, using the matrices P, D, and P inverse. If you remember the previous video, and this you can check if you're not sure, a will be equal to the matrix P times D times P inverse. And again, you could simply do this matrix times D times P inverse and make sure that you will get, if you compute these two products, that you will arrive at the matrix 7, 10, 1, negative 2. I will leave that up to you. But the great thing was that if this is true, and actually it is, then the nth power of A is simply P, the nth power of D, times P inverse. And this should be fairly easy to compute. Let's do it. So, what do we have? We had A to the N, well A is the matrix 7, 10, 1, negative 2, to the nth power for any n, is the matrix P, well, the matrix P we found to be 10, 1, 1, negative 1, times the matrix D to the n, but if you remember, the matrix D was 8, 0, 0, negative 3, and because D is diagonal, d to the n will be a to the n, 0, 0, negative 3 to the n. And be careful here, because the negative 3 um, is all to the nth power, be careful to introduce brackets. It's not negative 3 to the n, it's really negative 3 to the nth power. So we have p, d to the n, p inverse, and P inverse was 1 over 11 times 1, 1, 1, negative 10. And now let's compute these two products. We'll compute this matrix times this one. And with the 1 over 11, we'll leave it up front. It's a scalar multiple, so we can just bring it up front. So this will be 1 over 11. And now let's multiply these two, and then we'll multiply by this one. So if we multiply these two matrices, the result will still be a 2 by 2 matrix. We'll have 10 times a to the n plus 0, so just 10 times a to the n. Then we'll have 0 plus negative 3 to the n, therefore negative 3 to the n. Second row, 8 to the n minus 0, 8 to the n. Second entry, 0 minus negative 3 to the nth power. So that's the result of multiplying these two matrices. We've pulled the 1 over 11 up front because it is a scalar multiple. And of course we're left with multiplying these two matrices by this one. So 1, 1, 1, negative 10. One last multiplication and we're done. So 1 over 11 what are we going to have? 10 times a to the n times 1, so 10 times
times a to the n plus negative 3 to the n times 1. So simply plus negative 3 to the n. We have our first entry of the first row. Let's find the next entry. So 10 times a to the n times 1. 10 times a to the n plus negative 3 to the n times negative 10. If you prefer, negative 10 times negative 3 to the n. Let's compute now the second row. 8 to the n times 1, 8 to the n, plus negative 3, negative negative 3 to the n times 1, so negative negative 3 to the n. And finally, 8 times 1, 8 to the n times 1, 8 to the n, negative negative 3 to the n times negative 10 will give us positive 10 times negative 3 to the nth. And there you have it. For any given value of n, the nth power of the matrix 7, 10, 1, negative 2 is this matrix. And you see, no more matrix multiplication. If I give you a to the 100, which was the original question, instead of doing this matrix times itself 100 times, all you have to do is plug in 100 for n, and there you have it. No more matrix multiplication, it's a direct substitution in the entries of this matrix. And this is really a fantastic application of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And you could have done the same thing with the 3x3 three three matrix as long as you had three distinct eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This idea would actually work the same way. The computation would just be a little longer.